Just like my last video, I am going to give you one more reason to stop using railgun in a group, when you already have one or two railguns already. I've got something epic to share today, a weapon that's not just great it's top tier, especially when you're tackling those brutal level 7 plus missions. This beast doesn't just wipe out bugs, it tears through robots like their paper. And the cherry on top? It's ridiculously satisfying to double tap those super annoying foes that have been giving us all a headache. Welcome to Insightful Gaming, and today, we're diving into a sniper loadout that's been absolutely crushing it in the end game for me. If this setup clicks with you and you find it as game changing as I did, hit that like button, and don't forget to subscribe for more Killer Hell Divers loadouts. Let's get into the details. Today, we're diving into one of the coolest weapons you can get your hands on in the game, the Anti-Material Rifle. Personally, I think it's a game changer. This beast is what you pull out when the usual guns just aren't cutting it, especially for those tougher than average enemies. Hang back and use this rifle to pick off the major threats from a distance before you and your team move in to clean up the rest, like taking out those annoying fabricators or bug dens. But here's a heads up for those new to the anti-material rifle, it doesn't give you a hip-fire crosshair when you're in third-person view. So, if you really want to land those shots, you'll need to switch up to first-person aim to use the scope effectively. Trust me, once you get the hang of it, you'll be taking down the big baddies like a pro. Let's dive deeper into how this anti-material rifle can be your best friend against some of the tougher mobs, especially those with a bit more armor. We're talking about the heavy hitters like warriors, brood commanders, and hive guards. These guys might look intimidating with their front shells, but a couple of well-placed shots from your rifle, and their history. It's pretty satisfying to see them go down with just a few bullets. Now, let's switch gears to a trickier opponent, the Stalker. These sneaky creatures can cause a lot of trouble, especially since they can grab you with their tongues from a distance. The good news? They're surprisingly vulnerable to sniper fire. A few shots from your rifle should do the trick to take them out before they can get too close for comfort. And then there's the Chargers. Let's be honest, they can be a real nuisance. The trick to dealing with them effectively is to aim for their legs first. Damaging their legs slows them down, making it easier for you to land those sniper shots. Alternatively, if you can maneuver behind them, you can take them out with your sniper. It's all about finding the right angle and taking your shot. Shifting focus to how this rifle squares up against robots, it's pretty much a game changer. Let's talk specifics. Starting with Berserkers, landing a few well-aimed shots can take these guys out without too much hassle. It's all about precision and timing. Now, moving on to the Devastators, they can seem pretty intimidating with their lethal arsenal, but they've got a weak spot. Their heads glow red, making them a prime target for your sniper skills. A couple of precise shots to this area, and they're done for. As for the Hulks, that's when things get a bit more complicated. The Hulks come heavily armed, sporting machine guns, and even flamethrowers on occasion. Their only weakness? A vent on their back. Landing a few sniper shots there can take them down effectively. If you can't get behind them, aim for their face it also glows red, making it a vulnerable target. So, whether you're sneaking shots to their back or facing them head on, the right shots can make all the difference. I truly believe this weapon shines brightest when you've already got a railgun or two in your squad. It stands out as one of the top support weapons in the game. Through the gameplay, it's clear as day, you can take down pretty much anything that comes your way with maybe the Bile Titan being the tough nut to crack. But hey, even tanks can be a breeze to deal with once you target their weak spots. This weapon has become my go-to stratagem, and I'm really hoping to see more of you bring it into your Helldivers missions. Trust me, once you see what it can do, you'll be wondering how you ever managed without it. Alright, let's shift gears and talk about the perfect partner for our sniper setup, the Scorcher. This weapon is a game-changer when paired with a sniper rifle. I know the Scorcher is something you unlock later in the game, so some of you might not have it yet. If you're still using the Breaker shotgun, don't sweat it. The Breaker is a powerhouse in its own right. Stick with it until you can grab the Scorcher. The Scorcher excels at clearing out swarms of bugs or blasting through lighter armored enemies. With this duo, you're practically unstoppable. The Scorcher cuts through armor as if it's butter, directly damaging enemies' health through their armor. For the heavy hitters, that's where your sniper rifle comes in taking them down from a distance. Meanwhile, the Scorcher can mow down waves of enemies and handle medium armored threats with ease. It's even effective against chargers, targeting their legs to slow them down before finishing them off. A quick heads up, the Scorcher has a smaller magazine, so it'll take some getting used to. Plus, it deals explosive damage, 
which means you've got to be careful not to take yourself out with it. I've learned that lesson the hard way more times than I'd like to admit. Getting the hang of this weapon is key. So, while mastering the Scorcher might require a bit of patience, especially considering its explosive nature and limited ammo, it transforms your gameplay when used alongside your sniper. Just keep practicing your aim and maintaining a safe distance, and soon you'll be wiping out enemies like a pro. For your secondary, start with whatever you have, but aim to get the P19 Redeemer. Even at level 50, it's my go to secondary. It's best for taking down light armor enemies, perfect for use during primary weapon reloads or when you're out of primary ammo. Now, let's pivot to talking about the ultimate stratagems that will take your anti-material rifle game to the next level. Kicking things off, we've got the Guard Dog Rover. Now, this isn't mandatory, but I'm a huge fan of it for our setup. The reason I'm all in on this stratagem is because it essentially gives us an extra gun. This comes in super handy for picking off those annoying light armored enemies. And trust me, it's more useful than you might think. There have been countless times where I'm focusing elsewhere, only to notice on the bottom of my screen that our little rover buddy has already taken out 20 or so enemies. This happens way more often than you'd expect. With the rover handling the lighter enemies, you're free to zero in on the mid-tier threats with your sniper. This means you can stay locked in on picking off enemies from a distance without missing a beat. Plus, the rover dishes out armor-piercing damage with its continuous laser, making it even more of a powerhouse. Now, the one drawback is that this laser doesn't discriminate it can accidentally hit you or your teammates if you're not careful. But honestly, with a little practice, you can easily get the hang of positioning and movement to minimize friendly fire. It's become second nature to me, and the occasional mishap is a small price to pay for the advantages it brings to the table. Remember, this is just my personal pick, and there are plenty of other great stratagems out there that can complement your loadout. But if you're looking for something to help manage those lighter foes while you take on the bigger challenges, the Guard Dog Rover is definitely worth considering. Next, we're talking about the Eagle Air Strike. This thing is the definition of firepower flexibility. It's like calling down your own personal thunderstorm on whatever's in your path. Fast to deploy and precise, it lets you control the battlefield with explosive style. Whether you're tasked with demolishing buildings or just want to clear a swarm in a blink, the Eagle Air Strike has got your back. Fully upgraded, you get three charges to play with, making it a go-to for any mission. And the best part? You can re-up those charges to keep the explosives coming. With the right ship upgrades, you turn the airstrike into an absolute monster. First, invest in the liquid ventilated cockpit. This cuts the cooldown of your eagle stratagem by 50%. Next, go for pit crew hazard pay, which reduces the eagle rearm time by 20%. Finally, grab the expanded weapons bay to bump up your eagle stratagem uses by one. Last but definitely not least, let's shine a spotlight on the orbital rail cannon. When you need something obliterated, especially those tough as nails armored targets, this is your Hail Mary. Pairing this with your sniper rifle gives you the perfect one-two punch for dealing with the big baddies like Bow Titans or Bot Tanks. If you enjoyed this breakdown and want to see more epic hell diverse content, don't forget to smash that like button and hit subscribe. Your support keeps these guides coming. Until next time, have a great rest of your day.